We're going to have a little interruption in our normally scheduled programming this morning. All of a sudden, we don't have any water pressure in the RV. And uh, I mean, it worked at first when I first got up and I made coffee. There was water and uh, filled Bella's water bowl. But at some point, I came over to get some water and it just it wasn't there. No, no water pressure. So uh, I'm going to test it real quick here uh, and see what's going on. I mean, first thing, uh, the system is energized. I turned the switch on and off, so we are getting uh, 12 volts uh, to at least the switch. For a moment, I thought maybe a fuse blew. Uh, but like I say, there is power to that switch. Uh, fuse panels back in here in the bounder, but um, I can't tell you how valuable it is having a multi-tester. If you own an RV and can even use the very basic, basic functions of one of these, uh, you can troubleshoot uh, a lot of things very simply and, and, and save some money trying to, you know, paying somebody else to do it. Uh, just knowing how to use the 12-volt function on one of these alone is uh, can be a huge money saver and headache saver. And then I thought, let's rule out the obvious. Maybe I don't have any water. I mean, I, there's a 100-gallon water tank in the bounder, and I thought, I don't know, maybe something happened. I got a leak. Maybe all the water actually drained drained out overnight um but uh, no there's no puddles and if it had there'd be a huge puddle so uh yeah i just filled it i know there's probably still 90 out of that 100 gallons available but the water pump is in here and actually i replaced this pump uh probably two years ago uh so what i wanted to check here real quick was let me see if we can do this here all right uh Let's see if we, let's see if I can, uh, see here's the, I got turned on. <laughs> yeah, this will be tricky to do. But I need a tripod right about here, right? Uh, so uh, there it is, it's reading zero. We're gonna, we're gonna stick it back here out of the way here real quick. And then uh, these leads, there's a, you know, there's a red wire and a black, you know, which is positive. And the black wire, which is uh, negative or ground. And I should be able to take the leads off of my tester, you know, red to red, black to black. And I should get, uh, you know, uh, I should get 12 volts. I mean, the switch is on unless there's a broken wire somewhere somehow. So, uh, yeah, the switch is on. Yeah, there's not going to be able to see that. Huh? Let's turn it. Let's, turn it. Let's put this back here. Probably still can't. We probably still won't be able to see it. Tricky business here. So there's a connector here that I'm able to put one of these. Uh, yeah, fortunately, there's a connector right over here uh, that I'm able to get this. Uh, oops, let's get the right one, Dave. I can put this, uh, the positive probe in that one. And uh, I'm gonna do the same over here. You won't be able to see that one, but let's bring this, uh, and there it is, okay? Oops, <laughs> let's see, there it is. All right, yep, we're getting 12 volts. The batteries are a little bit low um, this morning, but that's pretty typical. You know, the sun's out, the solar will start kicking in, and that'll come up, but that's plenty to run this pump. Uh, so we are getting 12 volts to the pump, which means there's nothing wrong with the electrical system. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with the electrical part of the system. And these have do have an inline, I know it's dark in here, um, but the water supply from the tank goes through this little screen uh, filter, the inlet side of the pump, and uh, it is, it is, I can see that it's very, very clear. Uh, it's not, you know, plugged up or anything, but yeah, I ought to whack it with a hammer. Yeah, but I'm, you know, better than 90% certain that this pump has failed. So, that's that. <laughs> So what I have to do is get to the RV store today and uh, pick up a new pump. Um, that was pretty easy to diagnose. Now, just quickly, if there, you know, the next thing I would have checked, if I wasn't getting 12 volts out here, um, I probably would have went up in that fuse panel and checked the fuses up there. Uh, you know, but still the fact that that switch, you know, lit up, I mean, it means that, well, at least there was getting 12 volts to the switch. So the, the fuse would have been good. Probably would have broken the system somewhere electrically. But if we're getting 12 volts the whole way back here, uh, it has to be the pump. 
All right, just for the heck of it, uh, let me see if I can give it a whack with this uh, hatchet hammer. Sometimes. <laughs> not. Not. Uh, we do just happen to be uh, camping with uh, our good, very, very good friends, uh, Scott and Terry. And we kind of parked here, parked the pounder kind of close here as a windbreak. It was real windy when I came in the other day. And uh, as friends, we have no problem kind of sharing a common courtyard here with uh, some BLM area. There's some other folks around here pretty close. But, you know, we're just outside of Tucson. And uh, that's it. We kind of have this little shared area here and uh, hang out and, you know, just hang out. <laughs> But we're probably going to run into Tucson today. Uh, then there's a little dead end road over here that goes up here. Dead end ahead. Uh, yeah, but Scott's probably going to give me a ride into uh, the RV dealer today. Uh, RV parts place and get a uh, the new water pump. We'll come back and get it put in. What is fortunate, though, is I do uh, always carry plenty of bottled water. And extra case case and a half probably under the couch so uh yeah you know, i got water for making coffee or whatever we're cooking and uh and for bella and stuff so uh it's not urgent and if i do need some water for other tasks i can there are the the low point drains in the rv i can get a bucket and go over and just pop the drain and get some water in the bucket that way and then shut the shut the valve and stuff so uh yeah we'll manage here for a little while this morning uh until the rv place opens we've made it to the rv store here and uh Tucson. Well, there's several of them, but it was a, it was the closest one. I did already get my pump. Yeah, typical store with all the you know all the goodies and stuff. And found uh, I think it's the exact same pump I have, so it'll just uh it's just a quick easy replacement. I think it's uh, three gallons per minute and 55 psi pressure. Yeah, they're a little pricey. But uh, there we can do. Cost of living in an RV. Oh wait, here's some vintage stuff. <laughs> wow. Old TVs and VCRs. Microwaves. I think this is a used parts place too. Uh, actually, I think I'm back. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of older RVs. I think they part them out. Yeah, it's new and used parts. And there's actually an old bounder out there like Betty, too. Let's, let's go out. Yeah. Yes. What's that? How much do you think it's at the other place? Right? I think I paid three ninety nine a gallon for propane. Yeah. All right. There's a, there's a bounder on the right. And then uh, over there, back in there, sits an old bounder like Betty. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get propane here. We're gonna grab some propane here. We were gonna get propane here, and the guy inside says it's 409 a gallon. But then uh, Scott just went over there to get it filled, his up, filled up, and the guy says, no, it just went up to $4.49 a gallon. Wow, a 40 cent jump. Wow. So we're going to go, yeah, there's a place on the way back that uh, I got it at not too long ago. It was $3.99 a gallon. Of course, they may have had a price hike by now, too. But it's on, it's on the way back. It's not out of our way, so we're just going to wait and get it there. Oops. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll talk about a price difference. And I'm, I'm glad because I'm going to be coming back here uh, at some point to get propane in the RV, which will be a lot, a lot more propane. Um, just a little 20-pounder um, uh, propane tank. You know, the price difference from that last place. Okay, those, those 20 pounders are actually four and a half gallons of propane. And the price difference was a dollar a dollar twenty per gallon. And it was only yeah, it was only three. Last place was four forty-nine. 
this place is 329 so you know we're still in tucson <laughs> so um you know it pays to call around or that's what i say you know you know five bucks or something right or no yeah one two yeah yeah you know five ish and uh scott has a a 30 pound tank so that's probably somewhere around seven gallons so at a dollar 20 well do the math you know what do you say eight bucks or so so uh, that's that i'm gonna get back to the uh we're gonna be done with our running we're gonna go back over to camp and uh think about getting that water pump installed actually i don't know what i did yesterday but my back is ugh, my back is giving me a hard time i might go lay down for a little while actually, and then worry about the water pump i'm not feeling no good oh, thank you very much. Good girl. Okay, come on. Come on, this way, this way, come on. Come on. Bella wants to go visiting. Come on, girl, this way. No, 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 maybe later. Come on, inside. Maybe later. All right, we're back and I left Bella out. And uh, uh, that water pump's, I'm gonna have to wait and, and finish that job later today or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a couple of ibuprofens and lay down a while. I don't know what I did to my back, but you know, it should be better later. We'll see. The good news is, well, there's two good newses. One is I got the, I replaced the pump, and uh, we have water pressure again. That was the problem, so I properly diagnosed that. The second good news is, after laying down a while. My back is feeling much better. I don't know what happened, what I did, but anyway, I feel much better. So, whew, that's a, you know, uh, these, oh, and the thing about these pumps here, hang on, they're, uh, they're really simple. You know, there's a, those blue things on, let me go this way. You know, this blue thing and this blue thing, you know, one is water in, one is water out. They just screw off and screw back uh, and, you know, and undo the wires, take it out, you know, and then put it back in. Put them two screw connections back on hook the wires back up and you're it and it has a couple of uh you know, this black part on the bottom and there's a couple of mounting screws that hold it securely but I mean, it's really really basic most uh any uh even lightly skilled we'll call it uh do-it-yourselfers out there it, it's just an easy job but yeah the good news yeah it's good to have water pressure in the rv again so yeah that's better <laughs> All right, and uh, lastly, travel plans have changed once again. Not a big deal. There's just so many variables sometimes in uh, in this lifestyle, of, uh, how things are coming together. And uh, one thing that starts pushing me is knowing that I can, my spring and summer can get pretty busy. And I'm so glad I went up early last year. I, I mean, I was in Tennessee on my way up in March 1st. And by March 3rd, I was up up in Pennsylvania and had purchased the van and got busy building it and other things uh, went on and the summer flew by so fast I'm really happy I got up as early as I did and now that I'm kind of thinking things about this year so much could happen possibly with the bounder possibly with that van and just, anyway I'm just not gonna worry about it all right now and, and get too far ahead of myself and I always look ahead in the weather. Somebody said, oh, it's way too early to head east. Not really. Not really when, you know, I really study the the uh, 10 day forecast and monthly averages in different parts of the country all along the south. Uh, when I said going east, I didn't say northeast. I'm going east for now, starting on my way. Uh, and then as the weather breaks some more, then start heading north. Uh, so, Anyway, it's not too early. I've been there uh, this early before. Yeah, the year before that, I was up even earlier than that. So um, I always study it and I know what I'm, what I'm heading into and what I might have to tolerate or what I choose to tolerate. But we might just hang out here uh, for a little longer after all. Um, we'll see what happens. 
there's other variables at play besides that so uh, it, it's all good what I say before sometimes you got to remain flexible especially when you're hanging with friends and stuff and and the other part of that is I really only come out here for a couple of months so in the entire year if I'm out here seeing my friends for two or three months that's all the more I see them at each year you know so I might choose to just hang out with them uh, a little bit longer enjoy this weather out here and not be in such a rush to go I do enjoy being with my friends I, I sometimes I do regret that I didn't hang out longer so that's one of the bigger parts at play right now so uh, anyway we're gonna get on with things everything's under control boundaries feeling better I'm feeling better I'll see you next time